So everyone who's here tonight, thank you all for joining. I'm so excited for you all to be here. My name is John. I am a GAP consultant here at EF Gap Year, and I am going to be joined by three really incredible alumni who I will introduce in just a bit. Fun fact, I myself am actually an alum. I did a gap semester with EF a couple years back, so I'm super excited to be joined by these great people. And so for all of you here today, uh, we're going to be having a discussion with these alumni to share stories from their own experience. We're gonna be talking about why they decided to take a gap, where they're at now, and go through some of their favorite uh, photos and memories uh, while on program. But before we jump right into that, I think it'd be helpful for all of you here to give a little bit more background on who we are and what our programs are all about. So um, to start, our programs are offered, uh, our GAP programs are offered for anyone ages 18 to 22. So that means whether you are uh, looking to take a GAP right after you graduate high school and before you start college or during your college experience or even after your college experience, we have built these programs for you so you can allow yourself to build those real world skills uh, while making those amazing lifelong memories and just return home a better you, just ready to take on whatever can be next. So let's get right into it. So uh, I wanna begin by telling you a bit about EF and who we are. EF stands for Education First, and we are the world leader in educational travel. We've been doing this since 1965, and during that time, we've helped millions of people. We've helped them see new places while uh, experiencing new cultures, through that, learning new languages, and just simply learning new things about the world and about themselves. And so you may have heard of us already. We're also an educational partner. We work with thousands of high schools and universities uh, all throughout the United States. Uh, many of you may, may already know us because we work with your high school or with your college, or maybe you have traveled with EF Tours or EF Explore America or have seen ads for EF Ultimate Break. Uh, we call ourselves globally local. What this means is that we are located in about 114 countries all around the world. We have offices here. And so what that means is that we know pretty much what's happening everywhere we travel because we ourselves live and work in these places. And what this also allows for us to do is that we can be there for our customers should they need us in many ways that many other GAP providers just can't. And so when it comes to EF Gap Year, we really focus on that our programs are designed to help our students thrive in this ever-changing world. And what this means is that we want our students to feel equipped, and you'll be hearing firsthand how our own students were impacted by these programs, by having the space, the tools, the experiences, and most importantly, the confidence to just take on this work. So with all that said, I think it'd be helpful to get into a bit about the program itself and how it's all structured and how everything works. So to begin, I think it's helpful to break this down into the three different lengths of program options we have here. So we first have our four week long short term programs, our 10 week long semester programs, as well as our 25 week customizable gap year program. I'm gonna give you just a little tease on these programs uh, tonight so we, that we can spend a majority of our time with our alumni. But um, if you wanna learn a little bit more about the nitty gritty of what these programs look like, um, I'd recommend you to explore the weekly itineraries we have on our website. And we are also hosting another uh, webinar tomorrow night, which will go more in depth into each one of these programs. And so the great thing about these programs are, are when the departure dates, they are, they are designed to really mimic the academic year. So the gap year program mimics the academic calendar in it that it has two semesters, uh, starting in the fall with a winter break and then the spring semester. The gap semester programs uh, depart in the fall and the spring, and then the short-term programs have departures all throughout the year, uh, so you can really plug that in to when you see fit. So um, when talking about our programs, I think it's really helpful to understand these four basic building blocks that comprise all of our uh, programs, and these are our modules. So every EF gap program that you see me talk about is comprised of these different modules. And so some 
are uh, give you the opportunity to uh, customize your destinations, while others are more fixed in their itineraries. So these include the guided exploration module, the language and culture, the service and sustainability, as well as the business and internships. And so what the guided exploration module means is that it really is uh, allows you the opportunity uh, and is great for the student who just loves being immersed in a wide range of cultures, just really absorbing as much as they can. Next, the language and culture module is really for the student who is passionate about immersing themselves through language. And this is what I did uh, in my own gap semester program through living with a host family or in one of our EF uh, residences. The third module we have is our service and sustainability module. And this is really great for those looking to make a real impactful, powerful effect on different international communities. And lastly, we have our business and internships module, uh, which probably is self-explanatory, but really great for the student who is looking to have more of an independent gap program with some more professional international business experience built into that. And so I also wanna say of, uh, that regardless of which program you choose, all of our programs travel within these cohorts. Uh, cohorts of around 30 students, give or take, I would say plus or minus 10. Uh, and on top, of every, um, on top of every program here, every student is also matched with a one-on-one -on -one program advisor. So this advisor is a one-on-one -on -one mentor, an emergency contact, and they are really someone who will be in contact with you once you secure your spot in a program, all the way until you return uh, back home from your program. On the ground, you also have your own EF tour director, uh, and they kind of help to give that uh, insider uh, expert local knowledge, as well as a student life coordinator on uh, select programs, which I like to compare to almost uh, having a college RA on program with you. So I'll dig into a little bit more about what these look like in just a minute. But before I get into that, I want you to know that regardless of which program you do choose, here is what's included. All of those international flights, uh, as well as all of the on the ground transportation, either by bus or by train or by boat. You also have your accommodations in your hotels or hostels or homestays that's included. Uh, many of your on program meals, as well as all of your activities and excursions on program, as well as that 24 seven EF global support and that mentorship as well. So with that said, I'll jump right into our first program option, which are our short-term programs. Again, these are four weeks long and happen in various countries and at different times throughout the year. So uh, the first short-term program we have is our European Discovery Program. And this takes you uh, through four major European countries and is that guided exploration module, but within the short-term version. And so this is really great especially for the student who wants to get uh, you know, a breadth of knowledge across different subjects and places. We also have the Sustainable Development Program in Costa Rica, which is the module that's focused more on the service and sustainability. And uh, this is great because you get to work hands-on with many local uh, nonprofits uh, focusing on environmental sustainability. Or if you are the student who is more interested in kind of an academic and business oriented focus, you can go to London and travel with us and study the basics uh, uh, at our international business school in Holt. So next we have our semester programs. And again, these are 10 weeks long and are built around that academic semester, again, with departures in the fall and in the spring. So we see a lot of students on these programs who are maybe deferring from college, um, want more time with applications, maybe they're graduating early, uh, we see a lot of spring admits on these programs or also the students who maybe just want to take a break uh, before, during or after their college experience. And these semester programs are some of our most popular and fastest growing programs. And I'll show you some of the programs we have uh, in the next slide. And as, as you can imagine, they are really immersive and great chance to explore different parts of the world. So here are the, the five different offerings that you can choose from. Uh, all allowing you to kind of explore and immerse yourself uh, around the world. And um, we have five semester programs that really mix and match, mix and match those modules, those four modules that I was speaking about, and they all vary in levels of independence and structure. For example, the entrepreneur program, it combines that guided exploration module with the internship in Stockholm. 
And so, uh, again, a really great way to kind of get different uh, feel in the city and country that you're in. Um, and one of our panelists uh, was actually on the Pathfinder program, and she'll talk more about her experience in just a bit. But again, I don't want to spend all of our time going through each one of these in specific detail. Um, again, our, week, our website has the weekly itineraries if you do want to go into this, as well as a webinar that we are hosting uh, tomorrow that you can uh, join uh, from our website as well. So lastly, we have the gap year program. This is our 25 week uh, program. And this again, has a fall semester, then we send the students back home for winter break. And then again, for the, uh, the following spring semester. And the great thing about the gap year program is that it goes through all four of those modules that I spoke about. It allows you to combine that travel with that language immersion, with the service and the internship. And you do this all alongside your cohort. And this is our most customizable module. Uh, and again, I wanna say that with regardless of which program you do choose, you do have the opportunity to earn college credit. Um, that's something you can opt into uh, if you'd like through our partnership with Southern New Hampshire University. So um, that kind of nears the end of the informative piece of this session. And hopefully you guys are feeling uh, really inspired and energized by this. I know I ran through these programs pretty quickly, but I also want to include the pricing breakdowns um, for how these programs work. Uh, we do have uh, lots of ways to handle these finances from payment plans to scholarships um, to fundraising. Really lots of ways to help make this uh, a reality. And um, what I would suggest for all of you who are looking to get more connected with how to make this uh, and how to talk next steps, I recommend that you connect with your gap year consultant. Maybe they're in contact with you already. Uh, if not, they definitely will be reaching out to you after this uh, webinar and they will really dive into more detail on anything that I uh, had said. All right, so without further ado, I'd like to welcome our alumni. We have uh, three fantastic alumni joining us here today, Chloe, Griffin, and Sophia. You guys can um, take your cameras off uh, and, or turn your cameras on. I don't know if that was the right language to use, but I'm so excited to speak with all of you and to get into your experiences. And I first want to, I guess I'll start with Chloe. She's the first one up. Chloe, can you, Give a little bit introduction of who you are, um, where you're joining us from today, and just a little basic rundown of the program you chose. Yeah, so hi, I'm Chloe. I did the Pathfinder. I actually did it fall of, or I did um, spring of this year, so of 2022. Um, and I had just graduated from college. I graduated with my bachelor's in journalism and media studies in December, so I graduated a semester early. Um, and then I chose, yeah, to go on the Pathfinder because there were so many options. Um, I kind of had missed the opportunity to study abroad while in school. And then once I graduated, I didn't really want to actually study abroad, like study while being abroad. Um, so this gave me a lot of leeway and stuff like that. I'm coming from a small town in Southwest Wyoming, like less than 25,000 people. Um, so yeah, that's me. Griffin, let's pass it over to you. And again, a little basic introduction of who you are, where you're coming from, and a little rundown of the program you chose. All right. Hey, everybody. I'm Griffin. I'm from Boulder, Colorado. And before I went on gap year, I just graduated high school. And I chose to do the six-month-long one. And I got to see a variety of everything EF has to offer. And I thought it was awesome because going into it, I thought that I was really going to prefer the business. But then I ended up really loving the service. But it was great to be able to see everything, experience everything that um, EF and all the countries have to offer. Love to hear that. Uh, Sophia, you're next. Again, a little introduction of who you are, what you got going on, uh, where you're coming from, and a little rundown of the program you chose. Yeah, so hi, everybody. Um, my name is Sophia, as he said. Um, I chose the uh, Costa Rica Development Program uh, for Sustainability, and that was about a month long. And I'm coming from Ocean City, New Jersey. 
So it was a bit of a flight for me, but it was totally worth it. Um, yeah, I went to just kind of experience. I wanted something new. I had just got out of high school and I always knew that I wanted to travel and help people. So that was like a big thing and getting to do all the services that involved with children and also animals. It was a big, it was a big um, opportunity for me that I was glad that I took. And I'm currently now, um, I'm actually moving back to Costa Rica. Uh, that actually showed. So in September, I'm moving back to Costa Rica and I will be teaching yoga. So right now I'm home and I'm doing my yoga certifications and everything that I need. And then by September, I'll be back. So yeah. How incredible. I know I have a trip to Costa Rica planned now in September to take one of your yoga courses. That's incredible. Um, <laughs> perfect. So I think I would, it would be helpful. Um, I'll stop the screen share now so we all can kind of get to see each other. And I want to just now turn this a little bit more into kind of a Q&A on uh, like your own gap experience. And so, uh, Chloe, I'll start with you in terms of, I want you to go back in time, all of you guys go back in time to right before, or I guess in the decision-making part of when you chose to do your gap. Think of what you were feeling and uh, kind of what made you go into taking gap. And so, Chloe, the question I want to ask you is, what made you decide to go on a GAP program? And, you know, when did you decide to take one? So I'm, I know for sure I decided in like July of like last year, because like I wanted something to look forward to. It was my last semester, I needed like something to like be working for. And I needed like something to just like keep me going for that last mile of school. Um, I chose um, my GAP semester. So I like I, I did the we went to like really went to like nine different countries because we stopped in a couple that weren't listed. Like we had like lunch in Austria one day. Um, so we went all over. So I chose somewhere with this program because I also didn't want to just choose one country when I studied abroad, like a lot of the school programs had. I wanted to be able to explore a lot of different countries. I'd been abroad before and I had fallen in love with like London and Italy. And I was really, I wanted to go back to those places and kind of do that as a bit more of an adult, independent person who could understand and appreciate a little bit more, kind of apply what I'd learned in school and do that stuff. And like I said, um, I'd wanted to study abroad when I was in college, but I was in a sorority and had activities and you have internships and it just like all came, and I graduated semester early, it just all came very fast. I didn't have time to do that. And then when I had this extra semester, it, was, it kind of seemed like the perfect time. Um, you know, you kind of don't have any job, like you should maybe, but you don't have like any big responsibilities. I don't have a mortgage. I don't have any kids. Like it was like the perfect time and there wasn't going to be another time it probably in my life where I would be as free as I am and was to kind of be able to explore with no restrictions. Totally, Chloe. And I love all those sentiments and I share a lot of those as well. And I think something that I can now appreciate in hindsight of when I did my gap is I actually, I wanted to study abroad myself in college in addition to taking my gap, but I didn't realize that the major I had chosen to study wouldn't have allowed me the opportunity to study abroad just because of the courses that you would take internationally. So uh, I think yeah. both ends of the spectrum, realizing that something you want to do afterwards and before also apply in, in that situation, whether I knew it or not. Um, yeah, and I was I, journalism and I did not, I, cause like, I can't learn how to write in a different language. I just probably need to stay with English. <laughs> For sure. Um, all right, Griffin, I want to throw it to you now, thinking back of uh, high school Griffin, senior year Griffin, um, what made you kind of decide on go taking a gap? So I um, started thinking about doing a gap year around my junior year of high school. And I wasn't super set on it, but just kind of heard about it through some friends, piqued, up, piqued my interest, so I looked into it. And I ended up applying to colleges at the same time I applied for the EF gap year. So I had the option to choose whatever I decided to go with. But then as the day drew nearer and nearer, and I started to hear back from schools, um, I just realized that if I have the opportunity to take this trip and have all these experiences in my life, like there's no real reason to not do that. And similar to what Chloe was saying, um, this is the time in life where you have, you don't have a lot of things tying you down. Like you have the ability to go out and spend a lot of time traveling the world. And prior to me leaving for EF, a lot of my friends would say, why are you like, I don't understand why you're going on a gap year. Like, I just want to get through school, get it done so I can just get to work. And at first I was like, okay, I kind of get that. But now I'm like, why would you hurry up and skip something that's so fun to just go 
and get to school. But I mean, everything's going to be fun, but I'm not in a hurry to get um, to my professional career. I totally, guess. Griffin. And I think that's that's well said. You know, it's funny. Uh, I work with a lot of uh, students uh, like yourself and speaking with a lot of parents, too. And the number one thing we hear on the parent side of things was like, where was this when I was uh, in high school? Where was this when I was in college? Because I think uh, understanding that there is no real linear flow to the way you kind of learn. Like, I believe that that the way you learn, you know, whether that means experientially through travel or more formally in a classroom, I think these are great experiences. And it's awesome that you were able to kind of piece that together and, and have that, uh, you know, have that, that forethought. And yeah. Sophia, I want to uh, ask you the same thing pre-GAP, Sophia. What were you thinking? How were you feeling? And what made you decide on a GAP program? Yeah, so... Um... Since I think I just I decided to take a gap year my sophomore year of high school. Uh, I knew that in that moment that college wasn't probably going to be for me just because I've always just I travel was the huge thing for me just because like how everybody's been saying, you know, that's the time to do it. And it took a lot of convincing. Um, but once, you know, everyone saw like my side of it, it was it just made sense for that to be what my life wanted to be. And then as it was approaching, you know, senior year and going through all of it, of course, you have little doubts like, oh, should I be going to college because everybody else is doing that? Should I be doing this and stuff? But at the end of the day, you have to listen to like what you really want to do, because that's that's like you know that's what's gonna get you through it and um I found gap year actually off of a TikTok ad I'm not gonna lie and I it just it like jumped at me and I was like you know I'm gonna take this on a si as a sign and I applied and luckily I got a call back so yeah that's pretty much my whole little experience and I have never regretted it since so yeah that TikTok al algorithm really is powerful, and I think it knows <laughs> ourselves more than more than we do. Um, but Sophia, something you said that kind of resonates with me is, you know, knowing that it's something you want to do. How did you really know that it's something you wanted to do? I know you said sophomore year of high school, but what were your thoughts maybe before that, and were you were those like conflicting at all with what you had thought your future was going to look like? Of course, because um, you know I'm so in July I'm releasing my first poetry book. And everybody always thinks, you know, you have to think you, you have to go to college and get that degree for writing and everything. But I just thought I just want to write and that's all I want. And I can do it on my own if I have to. Um, thankfully, I do have a publicist, so I am OK with that. But, you know, so it's easy. You could just do it through Amazon and everything. But um, it's a lot of work and it was a lot of it was very conflicting because I thought, you know, I could go to school and enhance my writing abilities and do this. Or I was like my idea was like. I believed that you could learn anywhere and it didn't have to be in a professor's room or a classroom or anything. And I totally saw that I could just learn by experiences. And that's where all the true raw writing comes from is actually living through it. So for me, that's exactly what I wanted to do. And after my first po poetry book launches and I continue to keep traveling, I'm going to start writing more about the experiences of being a traveler and doing that kind of on your own. So yeah. All right, looking forward. I need you to send me a book and looking forward yeah. to the next the next thing you have going on. Um, so, all right, that's good. That's all super helpful for me to kind of orient myself and, and the audience here of the different possibilities of where you can be coming from. I think all of your stories do share kind of a similar common thread, but you guys were all in different places uh, getting there. And now I want you guys, I told you to think pre-gap. Now let's fast forward a little bit onto the on-program experience. You are getting on your flight, you're meeting all these new people for the very first time. I wanna, um, I'll throw it back to Chloe and we'll uh, run it through again. Uh, Chloe, like tell me kind of, what were you feeling in that moment where you, where you met all those people and um, like, did it take some time to get into the groove of, of everything for you, you know, in your relationship with the students? Like, what was that like? I think that being in a room, like, cause in my program, there were 60, people and then we were split into three groups so we had three groups of like 20 people so like at first you're just all in this big group and you're like I don't even know who's in my group like who are these people and it's just super overwhelming to like not really know and you guys are just kind of sitting there like not you know that like small talk you make when you know like you know you're gonna like get close and be friends it's like I don't know what to talk about with you right now and it's just really overwhelming and kind of meeting your roommates and kind of getting in like that groove of like who you sit by at dinner because that's always like my thing like I 
love to like go out and eat with my friends and do like that kind of stuff. So like, and that was like important to me and that's my love. And so I was like getting this group of like, what do we talk about at dinner? Like, what does everyone do? Like, how, how is our group dynamic going to work? And just kind of stuff like that. So it was really nerve wracking. And I think we all like have that fear in our head that like, I'm not going to be able to make no friends. I'm going to be here like alone. And that is 100%. Like I know literally every person in my the group of 60 people found it like at least one person that they could always sit by it with dinner or even if you just wanted to sit by your um collegiate supervisor like like you said the kind of uh dorm person um that kind of just facilitates everything like you can there's never going to be a time where like you're alone I never felt alone even though that was one of my biggest fears Totally. And I think that's really important for everyone to hear and still, you know, in people doing kind of new, taking step into new jobs, new internships, meeting new uh, clubs, friends. It's all those similar feelings. Griffin and, and Sophia, did you guys kind of share that similar sentiment with Chloe? Yes, definitely. Like one, not going to lie, when I first arrived, I was super nervous to go ahead and meet everybody. And um, for the gap year, there was 150 kids approximately. And so everybody's arriving at the hotel. There's tons of people running around and it just kind of felt chaotic, I guess. And at first it was like a little hesitant. I was getting in the flow, getting in the groove of how to meet people and like what's like the conversation topics. But after a few conversations and you realize how friendly everybody is and how everybody is there for the same reason you are. Um, and you can just ask questions like about anything and it's no problem at all once you start going, start, start the ball rolling. Totally. Yeah, I had um I had a different experience than both. I had eight people in my group, so very tiny. <laughs> um, but with what everybody kind of said, like uh, and especially Griffith, it was everyone was there for sort of the same reason. You wanted to you know travel and see things and make connections and work with certain areas of whatever program you chose. So I felt confident in knowing that. Um, my group and I would get along well. Of course, you still had those worries of like what Chloe said, like, oh, who am I going to sit with? And okay. And also, since my group was smaller, it was kind of, I was a little worried, like, oh, what if like, you know, like three of these people get along, but then, you know, I'm kind of like left out, but that wasn't the case at all. And we all connected and we still actually, all of us talk every single night. We all FaceTime and we're planning trips to meet in New York in June to go see everybody because we have one of our uh, guys who live there. So we're all going to go and see them. So, yeah. I love hearing that. And I think it's something we all can share as alumni of the program, what it feels like to be uh, to be an alumni. You know, we all kind of feel that similar culture, regardless of which program we went on. And we all had very different experiences, as we all said. Um, Griffin, I want to highlight on you a little bit more kind of navigating the full year of, of the journey. You know, you started in the fall, had the winter break, went back home and then went back in the spring. Is there anything that comes to mind where um, I want to, one here kind of moments where you felt like you struggled and then moments where you kind of turned that around was that linear or did it come at random times what did that look like um so i'd say during transitional times is when it was the most difficult because you're entering a new place that you're not familiar with and the cohorts change from location to location as well um i'd say one time i had some difficulty was starting my language school in barcelona and i was the class was a lot harder than i had anticipated and I wasn't with some of the friends that I had been with initially. And it took me a little while to connect and find new friends. But once I had a new support system and people to talk to and people to help me, support me, um, super easy to get reacquainted and establish a good baseline. But otherwise, um, I thought it was pretty easy to adjust. Totally. And um, one thing I wanted to ask you in terms of, you know, you had these different uh, dynamic pieces of the gap year that could have kind of differed uh, in a great sense of how they felt and how they made you feel. I know you had mentioned that service part. You were looking at maybe into the business, but then the service really stuck out to you. Can you expand on that a little bit more on and what that meant for you? Yeah, so I chose to do my service in the Dominican Republic, and we were doing a lot of marine conservation work and working with kids as well. And going into it, I wasn't super thrilled about, or not that I wasn't super thrilled, I just hadn't had much experience with something like that. So I wasn't sure if I was going to like it or not. And I was thinking I was going to 
be more happy doing what I was familiar with. But once I got to the Dominican Republic and I met the friends that I was going to be working with and started actually going out and getting there every day and being in the ocean, um, I just had an awesome time. Like the work we were doing was super fulfilling. Um, all the people, all the locals we worked with, like some of the nicest people I've ever met. And because the cohort, we were with each other pretty much 24 seven, because we're always in the same places, working the same jobs. Um, I actually felt like I got closer with those people specifically than any other part of the program. And so I made friends that I'm definitely keeping in contact with. And actually some just visited me uh, two weeks ago. Wow, that's so cool. And yeah, I think that that really, I think, resonates with a lot of people here in terms of sometimes not having expectations or not really um, knowing what to expect can be beneficial because you have these kind of hidden gems that that really stick out. Um, that's really great to hear. Um, one thing I wanted to kind of move our heads around now, you know, we we, we started with kind of free gap uh, on program gap. Now let's go into kind of post gap and where you are now. And um, I want to ask you, Chloe, again, I'll start with you, kind of what are some of the biggest takeaways that you felt running through all these different, you said nine different countries that you traveled, like, had you had you done something like that before? Um, if not, like, what did this feel like? And how did you feel like that impacted you? Um, when I was like 17, I'd begged my parents to like go to Europe. So like we did like, like three or four countries. So like, I'd done something similar, but that was like two weeks, three weeks. I had never done or packed for seven weeks before. Like that was super kind of crazy to me. And I think really what it, the trip prepared me for was like knowing or like planning. And it kind of showed me that, you know, sometimes you don't need a perfect plan that no matter what, like, as long as you have a grocery store, you can like figure something out like there, like it just kind of like showed me how resilient I think I can be and how like in the face of like some kind of uncertainty or I don't know some that I did to myself like the days that you know me and my my cousin I went with my cousin would like go on a train it's like I don't know how to get to this train station but like you figure it out and everything is always fun and it's just such an adventure and I kind of loved the challenge of just kind of going just like wherever the day took me instead of like just like having a plan and kind of having no expectations and just kind of enjoying the moment. Um, I think that it prepared me to kind of like, it opened my eyes to how many different careers there are. Um, I didn't know that you could be a Greenland ice fisherman. Like there were a couple like careers. I'm like, I didn't even know. Did you know you could just like be like a landscape architect, like for the gardens in England? Like who knew that that was a career? So it kind of opened my eyes to like a lot of the things that I didn't really know were out there as careers or places or ideas. Mm -hmm. Totally. And I think that's super powerful. And I'm sure you, you can experience that, um, you know, having had your college experience and then something super dynamic and immersive like this. And I think, Sophia, I'm curious to hear your thoughts on what it felt like. I know you had you had done your program in Costa Rica and it seems like you had it kind of shifted something in your thinking. So can you take me through like, what did it feel like going on that program and how that kind of maybe sparked a, a different kind of light in you? Yeah. So, um, yeah. So once I got there, you know, and all the nerves had settled and we all had gotten comfortable and everything, it had started with, it was a lot of uh, sustainability of like work and everything. So a lot of gardening and a lot of planting mangroves and painting. And I can tell you that I hope to never pick up a paintbrush again, but it was fun. It was just a lot because I had met um, a paint thinner that we had, would have to like, you know, put on to get the paint off. And that was, it was very different because I've never done that before. But it was at the end of the day, it was something challenging, but it was also something like I knew that would be helpful. And there would be times where like my roommate and I, we would take walks on the beach after like all like six hours of all this work and be exhausted. And we would just like watch the sunset. And I remember having this conversation with her and I was like, you know, I didn't realize like how much there is like meaning to life until like this moment for me, like that was one of like, it, it like changed me in that like setting that I had caught when I had gotten home, it was all I talked about was going back. It wasn't ever like, oh, what am I gonna do now that I'm here? It was, how do I get back? What do I have to do to get there so that I can live where I want to and do what I want to and also help like, because the community there, every local was just pure, like literally it's Pura Vida. That's their whole motto, but I didn't know what that motto meant until I lived it. 
And now it's like, I want that in every aspect of my life. I want to apply that to every, you know, just how I live my life and just to keep a peaceful and easy going life and to just be happy and make everybody else happy in the best way that I can do as a person. So, yeah. Sophia, I love that. And I think what's super interesting in one piece that you said was, you know, understanding also things that you don't enjoy necessarily, you know, yeah. painting, like that's also a helpful um, piece of information to know about yourself. I, I know there's this um, one, uh, I'm not sure if it's a famous kind of uh, thought, but I saw it uh, while I was scrolling through social media. It was like, if you learn to enjoy how to do the dishes, then that'll set your life up for, for some great things. And I think that's something you maybe can appreciate as well, kind of taking those aspects that could be um, difficult or physically demanding and then understanding how to how to view kind of the positives that, that come from that. Um, and with all that said, I want to now take it back into the photos that um, our alumni had shared. So I'm going to, I don't think I'm on it just now. So I think here we have Griffin's photos. Griffin, I want you to kind of take me through the three different photos that you chose and uh what were you doing and, and why they, they were meaningful for you all right so just one thing i do have to run in five minutes so i'll keep the descriptions a little bit on the shorter side but the first photo on the left that's from when we were in new zealand at the milford sound and our whole group as part of an excursion went out on a boat to just see just these like fantastic valleys and waterfalls with the ocean right below and it's truly one of the most beautiful things i've ever seen and it was super rainy that day but it made the waterfalls even bigger and it was awesome. And that's actually next to me is my friend, Paul. And I had all of my um, different parts of the program with him. And he's actually now one of my best friends to this day. And it was just a super cool connection to foster across the whole program. Um, in the middle, we have from the Dominican Republic and our whole group went on a hike to a waterfall. And it was just deep in the jungle, kind of super windy down some steep staircases through some trails. and it was great because it was a little bit more towards the start of our service and sustainability project. And it was a great way to connect with some of the people I have not talked to too much and just talking to people on the trail, jumping in the waterfall, swimming, trying to climb up the rocks, whatever it was. Um, it was just a lot of fun. And then on the right, I went to a soccer game in Barcelona. And one thing that I heard from a prior alumni before I went on the whole EF trip was that his biggest, one of his biggest regrets was not going to a soccer game. So I made sure that I definitely was going to go to one. And being in a soccer atmosphere that's live in Europe, the fans get crazy, like super loud. If anybody does anything that upsets someone, like the whole stadium is screaming, yelling, booing, whatever it is. And I don't follow soccer too much, but being there just makes it so fun, so, so interesting and just kind of like wakes you up inside a little bit. I definitely, I definitely agree with that. And I think what's something interesting that maybe you can apply to those other photos is um, that being in an environment that maybe you weren't super, you didn't know that you enjoyed allows you with the different, the right people and, and the right atmosphere to appreciate them a little bit more. And I think that's something that I can see. I don't know if you had uh, trips planned to visit a waterfall and navigate through a jungle or, uh, you know, visit the, the Milford Sound, but having those I think could be really impactful. And something I wanted to follow up with you and I'll try to squeeze this before you got to go is regarding these pieces with the different um, people you are with, how do you think you were able to apply that meaningful, that those new experiences to maybe back home where you didn't have the waterfalls, you didn't have this, this crazy atmosphere? How were you still able to tap into that energy you felt um, while on program? Um, I think that one thing I learned is no matter where I am, or what country I'm in or what language people speak, like everybody is just, we're all mutually humans. We're all there to just have a good time, make the best of life that we can. And you don't need a waterfall. You don't need a soccer game, whatever it is. Like you're always surrounded by these people that are caring, supportive, friendly, or that you don't know at all, but everybody is in it together. And I think it's important to kind of just keep that with you in your life. That's, that's like very well said. And I think that's something that all of us here um, as alumni can share uh, with our own experiences. And um, one final question before you got to head off, Griffin, is um, any tips, any advice for the people who are here joining us today that are thinking about if a gap is a, a right fit for them, or maybe they're nervous about committing to a gap? What are some things that you would want to tell them? 
Um, one thing I've been telling people since I got home, they'd be like, how was your trip? I'm like, oh, it's so fun. Like, yada, yada, yada. They keep it kind of short because I don't want to lecture people all the time because I have a million stories to tell. But one common thread throughout all of that is I say gap year, going on gap year is probably one of, if not the best decision I've ever made in my life. Like the experiences I have, the things I learned about myself and the people that I've met just made the whole thing worthwhile a million times over. Griffin, mic drop. That was awesome. Thank you so much for being here today. I'll let you go because I know you got to you got to run. Um, but with that said, I will dive right into the next photos. And again, thank you for joining us. Um, and let's let's move it uh, on to Chloe. Chloe, can you tell us a little about the photos you had here for us? Yeah, so on the far left, that's me in the Northern Lights in um, Iceland. That was such an amazing end to an amazing day. That day we went whale watching. Um, we saw like five whales. Um, they sang Celine Dion, like my heart will go on to like call the whales up to the surface. And we were all just like cheering. It was so fun. It was so cold. Um, then after that, um, we went to this um, place where these this family had been like basically making bacala, which is um, cod that is like dried out in salt water. And so we went to this family and they showed us and they let us taste it. And they also had us taste Greenland shark, which is like fermented in its own urine because it doesn't have any kidneys. And then we got a certificate that said, I tried Greenland shark. And it was a really fun day. Um, and so this was at our, um, it was actually a hotel and it was right outside our window. And whenever like the Northern Lights, we said whenever they were on, like you could just hear like our group, like pounding, like their footsteps, like going to tell the roommates, like I'd run in and be like, oh my God, Maddie, you got my roommate. You got to come out. Like the Northern Lights, they're on, they're dancing. And it was just an absolutely beautiful night. Me, I went with my cousin who is with me in the second picture. He um, stole my good idea and he'd, it was kind of like me and had done it, um, done his gap semester a little bit later too. But me and him, we stayed up until probably like one o'clock going in and outside like watching the Northern Lights. And then we had to be up like the next morning at like six o'clock to be able to go back to um, where we were staying next, which is, I don't know, we were in Akureyri and I don't know, I forget where we ended back up, but it was such a fun night. And then, so yeah, like I said, in the second picture, the middle picture, it's me and my cousin, Zachary. Um, he's exactly a year and a day older than me. Like we went to high school together. Um, he's my first cousin. So when last time I was in England, I really wanted to visit Stonehenge. We didn't have enough time. So I'm like, when I, when I was there, I'm like, the next time I'm in England, when I'm in London, I'm going to Stonehenge. So this wasn't a part of our gap year itinerary. But this is like, you have a whole bunch of free days where you can kind of do what you wish. And so this day we chose to go to Stonehenge and I learned so much. I mean, it's a dial. It like my trip really messed with my timeline of like human history and like how we have like developed as a society. And it was a really fun day. That day we went to Windsor Palace. We went to Bath. We went and had lunch in this small English village called Landcock. And it was really fun. We had uh, fish and chips, meat pies, and it was a great day. Just me and him, just doing our own thing. And yeah, we had to figure out how to catch the tube to the bus station where our um, tour was taken off. And I mean, you just have to like embrace the struggle. And it, it was just a lot of fun. And then the last picture was, um, I think, during our last couple weeks of my program. It was in Venice, Italy. We were we got gondola rides with all of our groups. So I went with my cousin. And then two other girls that I really liked, they had been my roommates. I still talk to them. We have big Snapchat streak um, and stuff like that. So that was a beautiful day. We went to a glass factory, uh, went shopping, got some Venetian glass, some Murano glass. Like Venetian glass can only be made right there in Venice. And we got to see them do it. And then afterwards, we went for a beautiful lunch, had an Aperol spritz, and then rode the boat. We had a nice, beautiful boat ride. And then we went back to Bologna, but it was a great day trip. It was an optional day trip. And if you ever had the option to go to Venice, I think it'd be absolutely crazy for you not to take it. Chloe, well said. And I think I definitely agree with that. Um, Venice is beautiful. And I love all these photos that you shared. And um, something that 
you said that I want to dig on a little bit more is embrace the struggle. And I see um, these three photos you said look pretty beautiful in terms of where you're at. And uh, they look really meaningful and uh, very picturesque, these once in a lifetime opportunities. Can you lean more into what that struggle felt like for you on program and how you were able to embrace it? Like, what does that mean for you? I guess like embracing the struggle. I mean, a lot of that stuff was so out of my comfort zone. I mean, like staying in hostels, I thought it would be even like so scary, but I'd be like, it wasn't, but still like living with like five girls and just kind of like figuring out the logistics of things. Um, like there were times where I would let Zach kind of plan the day and um, he's not the best planner. And there'd be like days where he's like, we have train tickets right now to go to Dresden, Germany. I don't know where the train takes off of. And neither one of us, he knows Spanish. I took a year and uh, it's like, I don't know how to figure out, like, I, I don't know where the train takes off from and, you know, running a little bit late and that kind of stuff. And just like knowing that like everything's going to be okay, because like, that's why I would remind myself sometimes where it's like, where I had to remind myself that in two months, two weeks, in a week, I'm going to be back in Wyoming and I need to embrace this moment and learn from it. And like kind of what I realized was there's not really a problem I can't solve. Um, like nothing's really that big or that deep. Like in three months, everything's going to be fine. I'm going to be back to normal in the United States. And right now it is a bit of a struggle. Like I don't speak the language, but there are always so many nice people that Prop, like everyone in Europe, it seems like knows English. And with like what we have now, like Google Translate, like you just, you have to like take a deep breath and be like, okay, I'm going to look up what this word means. I'm going to go over to that woman selling pretzels over there and ask her if she knows what gate we need to go to, you know, just kind of like relax and kind of remain mindful that this isn't forever. And even just right now, you need to figure out this moment. So that way you can enjoy the next one. Totally. And uh, you were talking about your cousin, Zach, uh, a little bit. And good thing he, he wasn't near you or anything to hear kind of the smack you were talking about uh, his planning. But He's I think he's not. He left. Unfortunately, um, but maybe. Saying, yeah, my cousin, we're, yeah, we're close. Yeah, Sorry, I think go ahead. Great. I keep interrupting you. No, no, totally. And I think that's a great way to not only bond with your cousin, but also people who maybe you wouldn't have expected to meet on program as well. And you had, you had mentioned a piece on, you know, I think what I could gather is like leaning on other people in order to maybe help move you past the finish line in terms of things that you might be uncomfortable with that maybe you're, you helped your cousin with and he helped you. And um, I think that's really great uh, experiences and things that maybe I, I think you can apply to other parts of your life. Surely I know that I have, I was able to do that. Um, but Chloe, thank you for these photos. They are really incredible. And I'm, ha I'm happy you shared them with us. Absolutely. Thank you. Of course. Sophia, I want to jump into your beautiful photos that you sent us. Um, <laughs> There was a lot to get here. So kind of walk us through what, what, what you sent us. Yeah. Okay. So um, in the top where you can kind of see our group like sitting down with like, uh, we're holding like a flag and everything. So that was in Corcovado after we had just finished working with the turtles, which is also a main picture of me with the turtle. Um, and those were very um, that was something that I was never like, I never thought that I would ever have a chance to work with marine life or anything like that. But it was honestly, it was, it was one of my favorite days, even though it was very hot, because in Costa Rica, the temperature is will always be warm. And, you know, even though we had to like untangle this turtle net that took 45 minutes with all of us doing it, you know, and it smelled very interesting, that's for sure. Um, it was so worth it. And I loved, you know, just being on the water because I grew up on the beach. So it was kind of felt like home to me for a little bit for like a second. And it was very um, fun. But we took that picture afterwards. And it kind of just shows like all of us, we also have, uh, we had Brett with us, which was one of our advisors for a little bit. He was with us for two weeks. So that was cool having somebody that we talked to on Zoom and then got to bring him with the trip for a little bit. And Freddie was our, he was just like the best, you know, tour guide, everything. I mean, he was so much more than that. He, if we talk about him all the time, how much we miss him. I mean, Freddie was awesome. He made us feel individually like we were his own and that was great. And we have Juan Carlos who was, couldn't speak a word of English. Um, and that was the best. It was our bus driver always, you know, getting us safely through those interesting roads because Costa Rica drivers are 
they don't pay attention, but that's okay. And Juan Carlos always got us to our destination. So that was awesome. And then on the bottom picture, um, you have us, we, it was our white river rafting day. That was closer to the end of the trip because you also got to do like zip lining and we got to go to the hot springs, which was very fun. But that day was um, very, I've never ever white river rafted. Um, and it was very intense, but we had like, I think a level three, which isn't too bad, but he, uh, the guy that was with us, he would let us actually put our paddle down one at a time, of course, and let us sit in the very front on it. And we would get like wiped down by the wave that was coming towards us. But that was very good for laughter. We also had in that boat um, or raft, it was all just the girls. We also had two guys with us um, and they had to go on the other one with some strangers. So we kind of pushed them to the side, but we made it like a little race, like who was gonna finish first. And they let us uh, jump off a little cliff with our life jackets on, of course. So that was fun to take a break. And they gave us complimentary pineapple and the fruit there is amazing. I mean, fruits get everywhere, but when you're in like the heart of it, it's, it's very refreshing and it was very nice. And then uh, the final picture, is us digging so we had to plant mangroves that was our big thing um it's the big it's part of the economy it's part of everything just to help with um especially when there's flooding that could come in just due to storms they kind of hold up they also produce like it's a big thing for like just to sell and everything um that was very interesting cutting um you know, water bottles with machetes in half. That was something I I never thought I'd hold that, uh, but I did. And uh, that was very interesting. Um, and us just doing a lot of digging, you're gonna find a lot of uh, bugs and that's just something you can't react to. You just kind of have to keep going, pushing to the side. Um, it was a very, it's always hot there. So, but we all had our music going and we would have, you know, five minute dance party breaks just to kind of keep the mood of it flowing and just like, okay, we can get this done. If we work together, we like broke off and like teams to be like, all right, you take care of this and we'll take care of that. And at the end of the day, we got it done. And, you know, it wasn't like, you know, we could have done more of course, but with the time, I think that we did enough. And it was kind of cool to see at the end of the day, like, oh, we did that. Like, and that was something that I wasn't used to doing like work like that. So I was like, this is pretty interesting. And um, what I loved about it that you don't see in the pictures is dogs follow you everywhere and they become your best friends. And you just, you know, they're all like so happy to see you and they will follow you. They all have their own little stories that the locals will tell us, oh yeah, there's, you know, he goes over here all the time, but they would just rest with us. So, and it always makes us happy because dogs makes everybody happy when you see one. But uh, it's like, how can you not? But it was very like, the element and everything and just being there and seeing like the work that you got that we can do together that was very important so yeah learned a lot totally from and i really appreciate you breaking those down for us um i also love i think i see you guys playing air guitar on the raft so yeah. that, that is a pretty great photo um but um sophia i want to ask you something that kind of stood yes. out to me and i think i'd be curious to see how you would uh, apply this but you'd mentioned you were able uh, to find home a little bit in some of these experiences that you're right. in. Can you speak more on like your ability to find that despite using a machete to chop up some uh, mangroves or, you know, air guitaring in the middle of a whitewater raft and or helping a sea turtle? Can you speak more on that? Yeah. So, um, you know, I think like there's that saying like, you know, home is wherever like the heart is or whatever, like wherever you bring it. And I think for me, this was my first time out of the country. So I was just, you know, I've traveled throughout all the states and everything just, just haven't, you know, this was my first time like really going away. And also I've always traveled with my dad you know, he's always been like my travel buddy and everything. And so this was kind of the first time like doing it on my own, even though I was meeting friends at first, they were just strangers. So I didn't know like anything about this or I didn't speak that great I decided to take French all four years of high school and I didn't even think once to like oh I have to you know I downloaded the Dilingual app real quick and <laughs> was working on it on the plane but um, I found I found home just by being in the comfort of the connections that I was making and seeing things that you know like stuff that kind of seemed familiar like when we went to um what was it um one of our first, I cannot remember the name of the sudden. Um, I think it was Monte Verde actually. And um, 
we had gone and we had went on this beautiful beach and it was just like I like I said I grew up on the beach I've grown up on the water you know when you live in a beach town you have to surf that's like the main thing it's just something you do and you know there was all like I could see other people surfing and I was like oh that's really cool like they're doing that like they do it here it's like a universal thing that's awesome and kind of just seeing like little sim similarities that I could bring like back with me and also like bring there and another big part of it was like um one night when we were in uh, Rancho Margot, which was um, more of a like, it was very like all plant-based things. Like, you know, they, um, they farm everything. They hold all their animals and everything like pigs and cows and chickens. They, they do it all there. And um, one night they made pizza for us and um, I love pizza. So I was like all for it. And uh, my, one of the guys, Washington and I, he's from New York, I'm from Jersey. We fold our pizzas. That's just how you do it. Everybody else was looking at us like we were insane for doing that. And they're like, what are you doing? Like, just hold it. I'm like, no, you fold it. And that was kind of funny. And we were like laughing about it. And then we were like, well, what else do you do that you think's weird that I do? And then we kind of like commuted on that. And then we were like, and also like we had a girl from Minnesota her accent was so strong. So how she said things, we were like, what? We were like taken back from it. But it was very cool to like learn everybody's like different styles at home and like what they do. And also like adding it to your group because you are living with people that you have never lived with before. You have to understand like their feelings. Like my roommate, if she didn't get an hour nap a day, we, it, no, it, you had to let her get that nap. And it was just something, but I was okay with that because I would take that time to read. But some other roommates, you know, at one point in Corcovado, we actually, all the girls had to be in a room together. That was interesting because we got to actually see how we've all been doing it because we just had two people in a room at a time. So like me and my roommate, we were like ready for bed at like 10 o'clock and we were exhausted. We like, you know, shoot, we're watching a movie together, but everybody else is like, oh, I want to like dance and I want to do this. Or, oh, do you want to make salsa? I'm like, no, it's it's 10 o'clock at night. I'm ready for bed. But like, you kind of got to see everybody's like different routine and different setting. And I think that was really important. And also like learning everybody's boundaries. That was a big thing for us. You know, it was like, you know, okay, like don't talk to Sophia right now. She's a little hangry, you know, just back off for a second. She's starving. Like, it was just kind of like, things like that but like you have to say it in a way like hey like I'm sorry like if I say anything I'm just really hungry right now <laughs> I'm not it's not towards you it's just what I'm feeling and that was a big thing I learned that you had to incorporate and I still incorporate that in home because I learned a lot of boundaries there and when I was home I got to say those kind of things and speak up I I think that that trip gave me more of a backbone honestly because I like in there you're in an uncomfortable setting at first and you have to make yourself comfortable and I think that that's like, you have to adapt to it, just like everything else does in this world. You have to adapt to new surroundings, new people, just everything. And so when I came back home, it was kind of like adapting again. Like all my friends are like, oh, are you going to be different now? Like, and it wasn't like so much that I was different. It was just that I think that I, I grew up a little bit there. And I was like, yeah, this is a place that I saw all this growth with other people and myself. And I want to bring it here and keep that going. So, yeah. Sophia, I think that is beautiful. And there are so many themes that I think a lot of people here in our audience and, and mm -hmm. Chloe and, and Griffin can definitely relate to. And I think uh, that's all super powerful. Um, so I appreciate you sharing that and kind of giving us a little bit more detail on what your experience was like. Um, we are at the end of our time here today. That flew by for me, not sure about you guys, but I just want to thank you all for giving um, me and everyone else here the opportunity to hear your story and uh, kind of share these photos and these good memories um, with us. And with that, I want to also just let everyone else know in the audience that the next steps, if you guys want to hear more about Chloe, about Sophia, about Griffin, about how to get make this journey your own, definitely connect with your EF gap year consultant. And again, after this uh, webinar, they all will be in contact with you if you aren't in contact with them already. And again, tomorrow we're hosting another webinar, which is kind of getting into more detail on the nitty gritty of what each program looked like. Um, so with that said, I want to thank you, uh, Chloe and Sophia and Griffin, wherever he is, for uh, having us uh, sharing your stories and, and being with uh, uh, us here today. And I hope you guys I let you get back to whatever you guys have going on. And uh, thank you again. Thank you. Have a nice night. <laughs> Thanks for having us and take a gap semester. Oh, no, seriously, do it. Buy the book. It's worth it. <laughs> Love that. <laughs> Have a good one. All right, guys. Take care. Bye.